Hello everyone, this is the uh, advanced section in the mini course on computation. And today I'm going to talk about the connection between black holes and computational complexity theory. Yeah, so uh, I assume people uh, like uh, probably don't know physics that well. Maybe all your physics is learned from my previous lectures. And also you might not know computational complexity that well. So this will be relatively basic. And because it's basic, so I necessarily need to skip some details. Yeah, so I hope at least from this uh, advanced section, it will motivate you to, to learn more things. At least this is also kind of, this intersection of black holes and complexity theory was kind of also my, my starting point to dig into like modern physics more. Yeah, and in the meantime, due to, I mean, we have a smaller audience, so feel free to just like uh, interrupt me. Yeah, I hope uh, I can make everyone understand most of the stuff, uh, at least a bigger story. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, so the plan for today is like, uh, I will actually first tell you what I'm not going to talk about. Yeah, and tell you a little bit about the, the little small things you are learned from this uh, lecture. Yeah, and then I'll recall a little bit back, uh, background on quantum and also some basic uh, facts about black holes you need to know. And then in order to motivate the connection to like complexity theory, I'll briefly talk, uh, explain like a uh, two paradox to you. But because we won't explain the whole details of black holes and quantum, so the explanation here might be a little bit high level and fuzzy, but hope uh, can give you a good big picture for you to move on. And then I'll talk about the connection to complexity theory and talk about what's the implication or like a hot physicist or like computer scientists think about this connection and maybe uh, adjust a little bit uh, like uh, in the future direction or something like that. Okay, so let's move on. So first, what I will skip. So first, I'll definitely skip lots of the uh, like setup of the very important notions and series, in particular, both special and uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics and QFT, etc. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to go into that, it will be a long journey. And in my opinion, for non-physicists, this is maybe not the most efficient way for you to get into the story or the, the line. But I also think it is, in the end, if you are really, really interested in this, I still think uh, it worth uh, digging into that. And I think I'm on maybe 10% of my journey to study this stuff. Yeah, but we know today we're only going to have 15 minutes. So the, the goal of uh, this section will be more on the big story. Yeah, especially make you, uh, I mean, let you have a feeling on like why like black holes and complexity theory, these two seemingly not so relevant things can be connected. And uh, also uh, give you some of the interpretation from at least me and some other people. And also maybe the most important is the third things to motivate you to explore more uh, like on your own or like together in the future. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start with some quantum 101 and black hole 101. So this part will slightly overlap with previous part, but I'll try to use my notation. And do stop me anytime yeah, if you feel confused, yeah, et cetera. Okay, so quantum, yes, let me change color. So if you remember, like uh, one of the first postulate we study in quantum uh, mechanics, is that we consider pure state to model like the world. So this is like, oh, let me change the, yeah, yes, okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. we think of a quantum state denoted at uh, this uh, bracket notation. This you think of is a, is a state like a model, like a model your system, model your physical system, yeah. Yeah, and then basically the evolution of the physical world is like uh, like acting on this kind of state. Yeah, and we also have like a lot of uh, cute examples. Yeah, for example, this is like uh, maybe Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, 
Yeah, but uh, because you can see my bad hand drawings, I cannot really draw a cat for you. So you can think of zero as a dying died cat and one is a living cat. Yeah, and we also see like uh, like uh, this is like something people call like bell pairs or EPR pairs. Yeah, so it looks like it's just like a like a having one more coordinate. Yeah, but this is also a special state that where like the first position and the second position, they are entangled. In a sense that if the first you measure to be zero, the second has to be zero. So this kind of entangling state is kind of like the, the main characters like in, in, in a study of quantum mechanics. And you can see that also from all the previous talks. Okay, so now this pure state, this notion seems to be very natural and Makes sense. What do I mean by mixed state? Yeah, so this is actually a very, um, I think maybe the first thing uh, when people start to learn quantum mechanics or quantum theory might get confused with. But let me try to make sure uh, you understand because this is also important for our uh, future discussion. So let's motivate the study of uh, mixed state from this uh, EPR pair, this uh, old bell pair. Yeah, so imagine. Yeah, now maybe you do a measurement, measure the first bit. Yeah, what will happen? You know that actually with uh, probability one half, you will result in the second state being like zero plus one. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just zero. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the with probability half, yeah, so this is this is second bit. Second bit. Second bit. Yeah. And this is a classical probability. So you can see that after this measurement, yeah, like a, like on this bell pair, we actually get something uh like have a like we have a classical probability distribution over pure state. Yeah. So you shouldn't think of this result as like a superposition over zero and one. Instead, this is like a classical probability distribution over two pure states. Okay, does this make sense? I think I'm going to pause here for a few seconds. Yeah, make sure everyone feels good and do ask me questions or like uh, if, it, if, if you got confused, this is quite, quite important. Are you yeah. okay with me just unmuting myself and asking, or do you want oh, me to add? Oh, yeah, you can just unmute, yeah. Okay, so here, uh, you said that the the thing that you pointed to it, those are entangled, right? So if you measure the first bit, then the second bit, you know with probability one, right? Not half. Oh, okay, okay. Very, very good. Very, very good question. So here, this measurement, when I said I measured this result, I actually didn't tell you what's the result of the first bit. So actually this probability is exactly coming from your ignorance to the, uh, the result of the first bit. Does that make sense? So indeed, if you, if you know the first bit to be zero, you exactly know with probability one, the second bit should be zero, but here, what I'm saying that is like before you do a measurement, you cannot control the first bit being zero or one. So you 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 have the ignorance of like you don't know whether the first bit will be zero or one. Namely, you also cannot control whether the second bit is zero or one. So there's an ignorance here, yeah. And this is exactly the result of like uh, having this kind of classical probability. So you can also think of this as like a uh, what we discuss in the statistical mechanics part about like the micro macro state, the a priori uh, probability. Does, does that make sense? Right. And so you are also assuming here that the state zero and one are equally likely. Uh, oh yes, because because of this, yeah. Because okay. by the postulate of like a, how, how, how do we interpret or how does the measurement mathematically work? Exactly. So that's why they are equal. So this probability is related to like the coefficients here. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. Good. Yeah. And, and thank you for clarification questions. I, I do think through our discussion, this this probably made much more sense before like, uh, I 
just explain. Okay, so hope now at least you at least aware of the difference between pure and mixed state. And mixed state is like the probability, classical probability distributions of uh, pure state. Yeah, it's not superposition. And then we also talk about like a, a unitary transformation. Yeah, maybe uh, this. Yeah, it's just the evolutions of uh, like a, like a pure state. Yeah, but you can also apply unitary on mixed state, but just like apply them individually and they still have the probability respectively. And this is like kind of like when people say this like a preserve uh, information. Yeah. Or it is like a, it is like a reversible, reversible, etc. And I mean, I can give you mathematical definition, but uh, I also feel like maybe it's not worth to like uh, puzzle people here. If you have, I mean, if you know this, this is is very easy, but you don't know it, it takes time. So I decided actually don't tell you about it. And instead, maybe I'll just like uh, motivate uh, or like give you more property about like this kind of unitary transformation of pure state to let you have at least some intuition on how to think about it. Yeah, and the first example is this no coning theory. We also see like in Chin's talk, I think. Yeah, this theory is about uh, saying that you cannot uh, exist like a uh, unitary with the following property. With, uh, yeah, with um, like uh, for any state, yeah, this unitary will map this state to like uh, this, yeah. And by this, I really mean uh, uh, this just like I say you, the, the two uh, uh, like uh, kind of independent, yeah. Yeah, meaning that there's no correlation, even no classical correlation regardless of uh, quantum correlations. Yeah, so here the, the quantifier actually matters a little bit. Yeah, because if you know the state, yeah, I actually definitely can construct a unitary, like copy, like cloning your state. So here it's really about that like, there cannot be a, like a universal, like a unitary transformation such that with any pure state, you can copy for me. Yeah, and this is exactly using like the, a mathematical structure and mathematical definition of unitary transformation, and then you can get this kind of uh, result. Okay, so I hope this uh, briefly recall you, like uh, how we like in the previous advanced section or guest talk about the property of some basic quantum fact. Uh, the orthogonal state can be copied, right? Okay. Oh, uh, so here the point is really about this quantifier. Yeah, it's like if you know the state or if you know the orthogonal state in advance, then you, you actually indeed can come up with a unitary to, to copy. Here is really about that if you don't know what state you want to copy, you want to construct this program or like this unitary for you, you cannot, you actually cannot do that. Yeah. So maybe you can think about this a little bit more. Yeah, but maybe due to time limit, I have to move on. But I, I will be happy to clarify this uh, afterward. Yeah, so before we, we also talk about Black Holes 101, let me also uh, emphasize a little bit more about entanglement. So entanglement, as we see before, uh, a classic example is like uh, this, yeah. Yeah, okay. And usually people maybe denote it as a, like a bell pair, yeah. So when you want to have a lot of entanglement, maybe people will say something like, oh, I can have, have, have a lot of uh, bell pair, like uh, bell pair, et cetera. So there are like lots of entanglement. And there's uh, also some, there's uh, also some ways, yeah, people to measure how entangled it is. But uh, for, I mean, for the simplicity of the, this lecture, I probably won't tell you about it, but I just uh, maybe remark, yeah, there's uh, there's measures. Yeah, for how entangle entangle a state is. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, I saw, saw another question. It's common correction, this property is involved. Yeah, probably. Actually, I'm not super familiar with uh, common error correction. So sorry, I cannot uh, remark too much on that. Yes. Yes. But um, OK, so it seems that entanglement is quite cool. Like it gives us some cool quantum correlations. And uh, people also have a, can have a measure to measure how entangled it is. And like in the, all the previous guest lecture or advanced section, we see entanglement as a computational resource. But uh, can, can entanglement can really be like arbitrary. So it turns out that very similar to no coning theory, actually the, the answer is no. Actually, there's some restriction about like uh, entanglement. You cannot arbitrarily have an entangling state. For example, this uh, um, monogamy of entanglement. So it is a little bit difficult to really explain the concrete mathematical details here. Yeah, so here I actually also just want to give you an example Yeah, to see this monogamy of entanglement. So now imagine we, instead of uh, having zero, zero and one, one, we think that we have a zero, zero, zero plus one, one, one. Yeah. If you believe me, there's uh, like a measure of uh, entanglement for it, and with a property that if you have one bell, bell pair, it is like one and two is like two for this, how entangled you are. How, how entangled do you think this state is? Yeah, is it, uh, do you think the entanglement is zero, one or two or more? So maybe I won't give a vote here, but I encourage you to think about a little bit about it. And the answer is the, I mean, I, I won't give a proof here, but the intuitive answer here is actually it is one. Yeah, you, you, you will just have one unit of entanglement, although I didn't explain what do I mean by the unit of entanglement. But the intuition is really uh, uh, like, uh, so let me give a maybe informal statement of this. Yeah, it is saying that, if say the, the first two bit, the first and the second uh, bit are maximally entangled, meaning that they are in a bell pair or something similar, entangled. Uh, sorry, <laughs> then uh, they cannot entangle with other. They cannot even have classical correlation with other, cannot correlate with others, other bits. Okay, sorry for my super bad whiteboard arrangement, but this is like the intuition and it's the informal and the, probably the simplest statement. Yeah, if you, if the first two bits, they are maximally entanglement in some way, then, you actually cannot have any correlation with the other bits. And mathematically, it is actually saying that you, you will have a bell pairs and like a tensor product with other stuff. You cannot have like a more entanglement with others. So namely actually in this states, yeah, like uh, they are actually entangling in a slightly weird uh, situation. Yeah, they are not maximally entangled with each other in a sense. Okay, so I'm here a little bit uh, fuzzy, but uh, I probably intended to do that because if I want to be clear, uh, I will lose many people. But I hope this, this slides give you a sense that entanglement cannot be arbitrary. There's still some structure. And this structure is exactly coming from like, a, we restricted our pure state to be like a vector, like in a, in a complex human space, et cetera, et cetera. And also like no cloning theory. Yeah, so I encourage you if you're interested, you can you can dig uh, deeper into this or even think about what's the philosophical uh, like implication. Okay. So this is the quantum part. And uh, oh, and any question about quantum part? Yeah. So all all all, all the I, concept I mentioned here is is important for the future. Yeah, in explanation of firewall paradox and information paradox. So that's why I spend time on this. Yeah.
Okay, so if you are happy with uh, what uh, I told you so far, now let's move on to back home. Yeah, so similarly, it's impossible for me. And in fact, I also don't know the details. Yeah, but I can tell you like uh, the basic way you can think about black hole. So now let's change color because it is black. So, so for black hole, actually you can think of it, it is, a, it is a theoretical prediction from like a relativity series. So it's a mathematical solutions and we can describe the property of the solutions. Yeah, so these solutions uh, predicts that uh, when like, um, like uh, the, there are lots of mass, yeah, like a very, concentrate in a small area. Uh, it's like a huge mass in small area. Yeah, and then this will have this kind of space-time structure. So you should think of it as a space-time geometry. In particular, in the middle, there's something called singularity, which is like when Einstein, Einstein says, like is it God divided by zero? So this is God divided by zero, yeah. And uh, you also have something called event horizon or horizon, yeah. Yeah, and the idea of event horizon is just that anything, if you cross the event horizon, uh, there's no way for you to go out. Yeah, so maybe that's the, the way you should think about it. So this is actually, I mean, if you uh, take a step back, this is actually saying that the space time actually has some asymm asymmetric Asymmetry, because it's kind of like saying, oh, you go in, actually cannot go out. So this space time actually has some weird structure. So this is exactly why, like when a uh, physicist, they found that, oh, Einstein's relativity theory has this kind of solution. It sounds so weird. Like, uh, are we really living in the universe, having this kind of, uh, allowing this kind of uh, space time geometry? Yeah, so this is the most uh, basic way to think about black holes, like a very like a huge mass in here and induce this kind of space-time so geometry. Yeah, and then you can ask further ask, okay, how can we think about black hole? For example, if we want to also study all the mechanics or like the evolutions about black holes, yeah, how can we say? So for example, in previous uh, lecture, we see that when we want to study a physics uh, system, we need to know like it's Hamiltonian or Lagrangian. Yeah, we, we want to like uh, know lots of information so that we can know how it move on. But it turns out that although black holes sounds a little bit scary, but uh, it is uh, actually very naive or simple in the sense that there's uh, no hair theory tell us that if you know the mass, if you know the something called angular momentum, yeah, if you never heard of it, then just ignore it. It is something about like uh, the rotation. Yeah, and if you have like the electrical charge, if you know all three things about this black hole, yeah, then you actually know this black hole completely. Yeah, so namely actually for an uh, observer outside the black holes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oops, oh, this is not circular now. But I think people do allow non, non, like a non, 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 it's a black hole not like a ball. Yeah, yeah. So namely, if people know this three information about it, actually you can, you can complete these studies. So it's like if there's a person, yeah, at least, yeah. You know everything. Yeah, like a starting from the initial, like a before they collapse into a black hole or something. Yeah, if you know all this three information, you actually can know like uh, how this black holes will evolve. Yeah, you don't need to know extra other information. Yeah. And uh, this is also saying that, okay, maybe I'll postpone this to the next slide, but uh, this is for now. Like uh, you actually just know, need to know this three, like a macro state, like this, this three macro properties of black holes, and you can understand its evolution. Okay. But black hole is even more uh, bizarre. Yeah, like uh, if you think about this, if you keep like uh, throwing things inside black holes, then it cannot go out. Yeah, it sounds weird. Is that mean it's saying that black holes will infinitely keep growing and same as it is? So it turns out that uh, at least people now think the answer is no. 
So uh, in particular, this is starting from, yeah, Hawking's famous semi-classical calculation. When I say semi-classical, it means that he assumes something is quantum, but he cannot assume everything is like follow the quantum rules. So this is semi-classical. He still need to model something using classical uh, theory. Yeah. But Hawking uh, basically predicts that using his semi-classical uh, semi calculation, there will be some uh, Hawking radiations. Yeah. Hawking's radiation. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is saying that uh, the, the black hole actually won't uh, increase indefinitely. It actually will radiate out some of its uh, particles or like in the form of photons or something I'm not super familiar with. But basically it's saying that the black hole will evaporate, it will radiate some, something out. Yeah, it won't grow on boundary. Yeah. And the key things of Hawking re radiation related to what we talked about quantum before, is like this radiation is inherently kind of uh, people, technically people say it is thermal. I might spell this uh, incorrectly, by the way. My spelling is not good, but this is saying that the radiation actually is a mixed state, which will maybe make more sense later, but you just want to connect to previous stuff. Okay, so so far I in this see us like uh, uh, skip lots of details and like the motivation why Hawking want to study this. Yeah, but so far at least I hope you can have a bigger picture on like oh black hole is uh, something if you pass the event horizon you cannot leave. Yeah, and uh, by knowing three micro state property, you can exactly understand this black hole. And black hole won't increase or grow unbounded, it will, it will radiate. Okay, so with all this uh, idea in mind, we now are able to explain yeah, some of the weird things yeah, physicists discover in the study of black holes. And they, this, these things will motivate them to study further. And this also somehow have a connection to computational complexity. Yeah, so please yeah, ask some questions if you do have. I'll start for five seconds, you know, waiting for questions. Oh, and by the way, I'll, I'll definitely provide lots of uh, reference yeah, later for people who want to study more. As I said, this section basically wants to motivate you for your future journey. Oh, yes, 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 exactly, yes. Uh, so Matthew has a question of, uh, is the radiation left, uh, left the event horizon? Yes, unfortunately it is, yes, yes. So it's the bizarre part, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the Q MacBook asked me about the no cloning problem. Yeah, okay. Actually, no cloning maybe is not super important for the rest of the talk, so I can tell you offline. Yeah, because actually the important part is the monogamy of in entanglement, which is kind of like a corollary of this. Yeah, but no cloning itself won't affect your future understanding, so I, will exp I can explain to you offline. But uh, let's move on. Let's move on to the information paradox and the feral paradox. And those are like, uh, basically you can think of them in hindsight. They are like paradoxes in like theoretical physics. Like when people study black holes, yeah, they, they follow all the, all the axioms and all the calculation and somehow they derive something they think is unintuitive. Okay. So what is uh, information paradox? Yeah. So similarly, now we have a uh, black holes and suppose this black hole is old enough. Yeah, Hawking predicts that it, it radiates and it's like old enough. Yeah, sorry, yeah, old enough. And it has uh, lots of uh, radiations. Yeah, and now imagine you as a curious kid. Yeah, you maybe have some, uh, some quantum state, yeah. Say you have a, oops, you have a quantum state here. Yeah. And uh, so this quantum state has some information. Yeah, and maybe lots of information. Yeah. 
and then you throw it into the black hole. Okay, so as I mentioned before, first, we have this uh, no hair theory. Yeah, saying that once you throw the, the, the state into a black hole, actually it's only captured by its like, uh, mass angular momentum and charge. So it seems that the information of this, uh, this bit well, well, oh, sorry, this state will like drastically decrease because now it only depends on like uh, some like macro state property. Yeah. And uh, then we also know that uh, the radiation, Hawking radiation, briefly as HR, is like a thermal. Yeah. Okay. I think I will still spell it incorrectly. It's like it's a mixed state. Yeah. And if you, Think about the definition of mixed states that classical distribution. It's also saying that actually there's not, it's, it doesn't capture the information here. Yeah. But we also have uh, like in a quantum theory, in quantum, we think information, information won't uh, be lost. So let's, uh, let me put all three together and then explain the information paradox. So it's like now, if you put a very informative yeah, information in a, a quantum state inside this black hole, you expect the whole system should still contain like this information of uh, the state. Yeah, and maybe it, in the beginning it does, but it's inside because you are outside there, you cannot really extract it, so that's fine. But if you Im imagine now the black holes like like evaporate, uh, it radiates everything out. So there's nothing left inside. Suppose this is what happened. Yeah, and because the, uh, the no hair theory, we actually know that the evolution lens only depends on the macro structure. It won't really depends on this specific state. And second, like we also know that the, uh, the radiation that uh, came out it's kind of thermal. It is a it is a mixed state. It is like um, it's like a how to say? It's like a entropy is very large and doesn't really 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 tell you the the information about yourself because you can think of it as like something maybe like a uniform distribution. Yeah. And finally, like in in like quantum theory, we talk about they they believe everything is running on like a by a unitary transformation. So information shouldn't be lost. Yeah, but if the black hole event, like a, have, I mean, it radiates everything out, it seems that this original information thrown into this black hole disappear forever. So what happened? Like, uh, how can we explain this? And this is like exactly the origin of uh, information paradox, yeah. So there are some, some debates about this and some of the resolution. For example, there's this famous black holes uh, complementary, something like that. But uh, today, uh, maybe um, because since I also mentioned another paradox called firewall paradox. Yeah, it is actually very related to this, but it's like a, another way to phrase the similar problem. And that's where like complexity theory came up. So I'll also describe that a little bit. But first to put this picture in your mind about like uh, information can be lost. And it sounds, seems that this three, one of them should be incorrect if you believe this argument. Let me drink water. Okay, so before talking about uh, firewall paradox, actually we need to have a slightly better understanding of uh, like what do we really mean by like the radiation and how, what mixed state means? Because here actually things are a little bit fuzzy and actually it's not exactly that what I say. It's actually a little bit subtle. So let's still think about we have a black hole. Okay, and in the beginning, it is at uh, say time uh, zero, t equals to zero, yeah. We, we throw some, we throw lots of uh, entangling stuff. Let me use this denote entanglement inside. Okay. So in the beginning, when we throw into it, yeah, everything is very, there's a huge like entangled state being thrown into the black holes. Okay. 
and then the black hole will start to evaporate. Yeah. And there is like uh, some entanglement, like a uh, cross in this state. So let's say, let me, let me say now, uh, maybe time equals to 100, although this 100 probably means nothing. So it means that you already have some uh, radiation. And this radiation will be like a kind of weakly uh, entangled with a uh, hostile inside. Yeah. And in the end, you might like completely uh, like evaporate out. Yeah. But how does the entanglement between inside the black hole and outside the black holes like uh, scale? Like, uh, and this is exactly captured by this figure of uh, page time. So originally I want you to guess, but due to your time limit, let me directly explain. So page actually show that the entanglement between um, inside and outside is actually looks like this. Yeah, so it actually looks very kind of linearly growth and then linearly goes down. And uh, in the middle, people call this like a Mr. Page time. And Page is a person's uh, last name. Yeah, not literally named Page, yes. Okay, so what's the importance of this and uh, how does this uh, related to uh, information paradox? So basically you can think of this as a more fine grained uh, characterization of uh, how the radiation, uh, I mean, uh, like uh, what's the mechanism of radiation and how does it affect the uh, entanglement. Yeah, you actually have this very, very fine grained uh, structure as opposed to, because if you don't have this analysis, it could be a case that it actually looks like this, right? Or it looks like this. But actually, page tells told you that it actually very very structural, yeah. In the sense that it's literally like kind of releasing one bit one bit by a time, something like this, entangling at a time. So it's very very fine grain. Okay, and it is exactly due to this very fine grain uh, structure, this leads to this uh, firewall paradox. And I hope this is actually will probably be the end. The last slides on. Um, the technical part of, of black holes. So I hope you can bear with me for a few seconds. Yeah, so, oh, this time doesn't work. Okay, now we have another black hole. Yes, so we still imagine, yeah, we have a person who throws some state inside. And now let's uh, have a slightly more fine grained uh, like a characterization of the state. So let's denote uh, the different area as a uh, following. So we have, uh, say, we have, let me take a look at my, my notation. Yeah. Okay. We have, uh, we have inside is the black hole, and there will be something on the boundary and we will also have a radiation. And, uh, oh, someone asked about the amount of entanglement. This is something I mentioned in the very beginning. I won't define here, but intuitively, you can think of this like uh, how many bell pairs can you be, can you extract from state? Yeah. Okay, so now you think of this R is the part of uh, the original state you throw in. Yeah and uh, it is uh, radiated out. So this is the radiated part. And this B is the next, very next bit uh, being radiated. And this is the, the, the part uh, inside a uh, uh, black hole. It's our black hole. Okay. So it means that uh, this state actually it has like uh, these three parts. Okay, and now the bizarre thing is the following. Yeah, by the prediction of uh, page time, yeah, it actually is first saying that, uh, let me maybe change it. First saying that uh, B, so maybe let me do in this. This means that uh, the B part, the, the next bit corresponding to the site is uh, maximally uh, entangled with uh, 
Ah, the R part. Okay. And in the meantime, yeah, it's also kind of saying that if you do the theory calculation, although I didn't do it, but I, if I trust the people who told me they did it, they said uh, it also has to be um, like the, maybe let me don't, don't say maximal, it's like also entangled with uh, the H part. Okay. So at first glance, maybe it's fine because uh, you never can like put everything together. So this seems uh, not really like a contradict to the like the monog monogamy of uh, entanglement because monogamy or entanglement actually doesn't allow a, like a maximally entangled state being correlated with uh, other stuff. But here is saying that, oh, by the calculation, actually the next bit being radiated out it is both maximally connected with the radiated part, but also it's like a correlated or entangled with the inner part. Yeah. Namely, yeah. So if 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 someone can uh, like a witness, yeah, meaning that they're seeing like one and two at the same time, same time then you basically get a contradiction to the monogamy of the entanglement. Okay, maybe I'll pause for a second to let people see if this makes sense. Yeah, do I lost people? Yeah. I mean, you can maybe focus on the story, yeah. And I, I mean, all, all, you can think of one and two, there are something like if you do a calculation or if you believe the calculation done by physicists, that's, that's what I told you. And uh, if you see them at the same time, then actually you, you can get some contradiction, yeah. Okay, so maybe let me, let me have a more mathematical description yeah, on this. So basically this is saying that, oh, uh, if uh, you can turn a state, yeah, let me hold, okay. And I only have five minutes. I just realized uh, I, am, I have really bad time management. Yeah, let me think about how to put this, yeah. But now the point is like, if uh, you can turn like, uh, like at least uh, the radiated part and the uh, the, the next uh, like radiated bit into something like uh, maybe um, in the bell pair. Yeah. And then you jump into the black hole with these things, maybe this is prime. And then you can witness the, uh, the like a monogamy of a, you can you can you can you you will contradict the monogamy of entanglement, yeah. And uh, okay, I I I I see uh, people's uh, puzzles face, so let me maybe try to make this clear. Oh, I thought I can copy this. <laughs> uh, uh, Take a screenshot, copy. Oh, so I think I can scale this. Yes, amazing. Yes. Okay, so let me just repeat what I said. What I said is like, uh, now if you have these two parts and you kind of, this process is like uh, you, you extracting uh, the entanglement out, especially this is the maximal entanglement on bell pair. And uh, you know that by the prediction of the theory, this bell pair actually is correlated in the, with the things inside. So you actually, if you jump into uh, the black hole with this bell pair, then you can witness the uh, like a contradiction to the monogamy of uh, entanglement. 
because you at one hand have a maximally entangled pair, but on the other hand, you entangle with the something inside the black hole. Okay, does this make sense? Yeah, I hope it makes some sense or at least uh, let you uh, feel like, oh, there's something interesting I should uh, learn. Yeah, if that's the second case, I still will be happy. But maybe now let me use the, the last maybe three, five minutes to explain how this connects to computational problems and computational complexity. Yeah, so you probably see it here, this is already hinted that seems to be related to computation. Yeah, because in order to uh, like uh, witness the contradiction of uh, the monogamy of entanglement, you actually need to be able to extract the maximally entangled pair. Yeah, so this is exactly how Harlow and Hayden uh, like state this. He states the decode, he, he like a model, like uh, the previous process of like uh, you have a, uh, uh, and uh, maybe you have your, maybe I shouldn't do this. I should just say like uh, you have the, the B part and this is the HH decoding task. task. You need to decode it into the R part and this and the bell pair. Okay, because in order to witness the contradiction, you really first need to have the maximally entanglement pair at hand. And uh, this is modeled by this, uh, how, and how low Hayden call this like an oh, HH decoding task. Okay, so how does this relate to uh, complexity theory lab? So Harlow and Hayden's observation is the following. So they observe that if the HH decoding time, uh, deco decoding task uh, is uh, inefficient, meaning that there cannot be an efficient uh, way to do it, then you cannot uh, witness the contradiction. Witness the contradiction. Namely, the firewall paradox wouldn't really um, make, like be a paradox. Yeah, because if uh, this uh, decoding task uh, cannot really happen, you cannot extract the maximal entanglement pair out, then uh, you, you, you won't be able to witness the contradiction, so there won't be any contradiction. So maybe what I'm going to talk, uh, I'll probably skip a little bit, but basically in hindsight, let me create another page, maybe. Oh, then I, oh. Yeah. Well, this page looks slightly different from the others. So maybe in hindsight, yeah, the connection is the following. They said if you believe, yeah, some um, TCS uh, assumption like conjecture, conjecture, then HH decoding task uh, is inefficient, efficient. So there won't be any firewalls. Although I didn't tell you fire, what firewall is, but basically firewall is something, if there's a contradiction of the, I mean, if you witness uh, the monogamy of entanglement, in order to prevent from you having a, the a monogamy of a, like a contradict that, people's imaginary thinking of there's a firewall to preventing you jumping into the black hole. Yeah, but if all the arguments uh, of Harlow Hayden is saying that if actually, if you believe in some TCS conjecture, then this is saying that this decoding test cannot be efficiently happen. So you cannot really, I mean, construct the maximum uh, entanglement pair and witness the, 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 the contradiction on time. Okay, so I hope this, slides give you a feeling on the host connection because uh, Harlow and Hayden extract uh, this important step of the firewall paradox and model it as a computational problem and trying to say that this cannot be efficiently done. 
Okay, so great. So let me unfortunately need to skip uh, some of the part, but maybe when I end the talk, I can stay here for the while to talk about how to interpret uh, this kind of stuff. But I uh, hope this already gives you a sense and motivation to further understand the connection from computational complexity or computational theory like to black holes. But to end this, yeah, so what does a physicist uh, really care and what's the implication? So it turns out that recent year, indeed, people think they kind of resolve information paradox and fire paradox in some sense. But unfortunately, actually, it has nothing to do in my from my my limited understanding, it seems that it has nothing to do with computational complexity. So in the end, it is not resolved by the Harlow and Hayden connection. But I think at least uh, from this uh, journey, I think uh, what's the main takeaway is that now, finally, our good friend physicist, or maybe like they finally want to become friends with us. Yeah, and, and TCS people, now they finally want to has a motivation to learn from each other. So physicists might want to learn like, uh, oh, what's the complexity classes? Yeah, and like, uh, what's the complexity con conjecture? And TCS people started to be interested in black holes or wormholes or other stuff. So at least, uh, although this doesn't really, uh, I mean, result in a breakthrough or like a resolution of an important paradox in physics, but it is it's kind of like it's the starting point of a conversation between two fields. So actually in recent years, there is indeed like a more stuff uh, going on in this direction. But uh, I hope uh, this talk motivate you to study more and I will be happy to talk about this more offline. But now maybe let me stop the recording and end this uh, advanced section right now because the next lecture is starting soon. So thank you everyone.